What's up, girls and guys? Uh, I thought I'd try something new today. I thought I'd upload something to my YouTube channel for the first time in forever. And I also thought I might explain exactly uh, why there's not been much content on my YouTube channel and why that's going to change a little bit over the next few weeks, months, possibly years. And I thought I'd do all that actually from the comfort of my motorbike, which is behind me. And when I say comfort, I don't mean relative comfort because it is, in fact, absolutely freezing cold, uh, minus three, minus four at the moment. But it's, it's gorgeous. It's a lovely day for a ride. So I'm going to ride home. I'm going to ride home via the Sewage Schleifer. Uh, if you like this, click like. If you want to subscribe and see more, please click subscribe. And uh, yeah, come and join me for a ride. Ooh. Minus one, actually. Take that weather forecasting system. It's not actually minus three at all. I'd say that's a pretty nice day for a ride then. I am, of course, facing the wrong direction, but I do have a, a little bit of a, a little bit of a life hack for that. Something I learned in my previous life as a motorcycle journalist. Easiest way to do a 180 degree turn if you have a high quality motorcycle. Balance it on the side stand and swing it around. <laughs> This is relatively light, you know, for an adventure bike. Okay, okay. Let's, let's head, head off. off. So, my, my home's that way, but we'll go this way because I'd like to ride past the castle. And, uh, yeah, as promised, I thought I'd give you guys a little bit of an update on my YouTube channel. Um, the YouTube channel has actually got a bit of form for indicating my current state of life. Uh, and you'll notice that my YouTube channel kind of died over the last three years. And that's uh, for many, many, many reasons. But they're all indicators of how difficult uh, COVID has made everything and also indicators of how my life and my lifestyle changed dramatically uh, when I landed the Jaguar taxi. Do you want to go to the, do you want to go see the Nordschleifer entrance? Look at this freezing mist laying over the sunset here. Gorgeous. Okay, I'll tell you what, let's pop down. Let's pop down to the, uh, Nordschleifer car park. So yeah, where was I? Oh yeah, YouTube being an indicator of my general uh, life. So you may have noticed that the YouTube ch channel kind of went a bit quiet. Um, there's many, many reasons for that. Most of them are to do with um, politics, uh, social media, um, and the rise of social media as a recognized thing at the Nürburgring. Because for many, many years, the Nürburgring didn't take any notice of social media whatsoever. Uh, and I think we can all agree that was probably the glory days of Bridge to Gantry. Um, yeah, here we go, look. They're just leaving. They're probably thinking, Who's that guy on the motorbike? He doesn't think he's going to drive here, does he? Okay. Look at all those cars. Doing nothing for the next few months. So let's start heading home. Via Nürburg. Oh, everything's freezing. Yeah, so. Back on topic, Dale. YouTube channel. YouTube channel was awesome when nobody in power, when nobody who made decisions at the Nürburgring was interested in Facebook or YouTube. Um, Nürburgring were pretty late to the social media party. I think we can all agree on that. Um, and 
when I started British Gantry back in 2007, you know, people at Nürburgring didn't even have a Facebook profile. There was no Nürburgring Facebook page. In fact, I don't think the Nürburgring Facebook page came around until relatively recently, something like 2015-ish. And basically, I was getting away with murder on a daily and weekly basis, uh, doing whatever the hell I wanted, whatever the hell I wanted, and nobody even thought to tell me to stop. So my YouTube channel was just a constant stream of stuff that was happening, um, most of which involved me driving quite fast or riding quite fast, uh, big skids, lots of crashes, lots of smashes, lots of things like that. Now, when I first came to the Nürburgring, I wasn't depending on the Nürburgring, I was just visiting it for fun, you know. But as I moved over here uh, in 2008 and started to live here, I became more and more dependent on cooperation with the Nürburgring as the days went by. And back in 2008, there was zero cooperation pretty much. Um, booked, a, booked an occasional track day, had some, some dramas with the Nürburgring management, but everything was kind of like, you know, they were interested in their thing, I was interested in my thing, and never the two things should meet. So we carried on. Fast forward a little bit, and you get into about 2015 at this point, and things are changing. The press department's actually interested in the social media. They're actually like checking things out and seeing that whenever you go and visit the Nurburgring virtually online, all you find is a load of crash videos. <laughs> so they started to control that a little bit. Um, I started to ask permission to film as well. And I enjoyed the kind of like special status as the biggest uh, YouTuber that was permanently based at the Nürburgring. That changed again in about 2016 uh, as they started to control more and more about how the filming was done. So I had to ask permission for everything, but occasionally I was a bit naughty and I didn't ask permission and life went on and everything was okay. Uh, by 2017, though, I was working for Jaguar and uh, very much enjoying my role uh, running the Jaguar race taxi. And my wake-up call was one day when the big boss of Jaguar Marketing um, is in touch with my line manager to tell me that we've, uh, we've got a problem, that Nürburgring have... Uh, been bending in his ear. Well, welcome to reality, Dale Lomas. So this right turn here, this is all new tarmac and stuff, but this little right turn here is quite significant because we're going to go on to the old suit slicer. Yeah, so at that point I kind of realised, oh, I can't just do what I want. I can't just film everything willy-nilly, um, I had to back it up a little bit, um, tie in some very commercial facts as well, whoa this is flippy, commercial facts like the Nürburgring own the biggest or awesome, most awesome Nürburgring in the world, there is no other Nürburgring you can go to, and they started to realise that and understand it and leverage it, uh, particularly with the manufacturers, and you know, quite rightfully, making the manufacturers pay to use the track and film on it. Filming licenses. Now, at that point, anything that I was doing with the Jaguar had a value attached to it. And that value was decided very much by the worth of the products that Jaguar are trying to sell off the back of the Nürburgring's good name. So, of course, that means, very, very realistically, but Nürburgring do charge thousands of euros for permission to film a single video for a company like Jaguar. And there's me, stuck in the middle of that with my little YouTube channel that doesn't really make a profit at all, that's just a bit of fun, and uh, I can't take a single video of the Jaguar taxi anymore, because if I do that, it's benefiting Jaguar, and if it's benefiting Jaguar, they need to pay for it. Well. Damn! <laughs> Damn! So then I'm doing other stuff on my YouTube channel 
And Jaguar are upset that maybe it's misrepresenting them because, you know, they're a big, interesting company with lots of big bills and lots of stuff riding on their reputation. Now, I'm just going to turn around here. We've come down the Suchlifer in the correct direction, but I wanted to point something out. So, this road is about 20% wider than it was when it was the Suchlifer racetrack. And all these corners are pretty much intact on this stretch. We're actually going against the flow here. And the reason I'm heading back to the Nürburgring camping entrance is because of this. Just stick the old hazard lights on because I'm going to stop here. Check that out. That, my friends, is an original 1920s concrete Marshall Post telephone box. And this is where the Marshall Post was for this section of the Suchlifer. So there you go. You learn something new every day. Uh, oh, look at that. We'll turn around. Because I just spotted something else. Might put my heated grips on soon. It's getting a bit chilly. The posters are up for the Elephantan Rally, which is, of course, the super cold uh, first month of the year motorcycle rally, which should be next month. Right, I'm going to do a bit of that look, put my heated grips on. Oh, yes. Right, off we go again. So, all in all, being busy every day, test driving in the mornings, taxiing in the afternoons, uh, not allowed to take any video of tourists farting in a Jaguar without Jaguar paying for it, it meant that I had to limit my YouTube output to very agreed sessions, dates, edits, etc. Uh, so you'll notice a few of my YouTube videos went up still, but they were always, you know, quite professional. And in fact, I was just copy-pasting them from the official Jaguar videos that were going out online. And my own YouTube stuff was limited to Club 1000 in this time. Uh, because Club 1000 was distinct and clearly not part of Jaguar. But maybe they should consider, you know, a change on that. Um, but then things stepped up a gear again and I was identified as one of the leading voices online of, of you know, of the Nürburgring and tourists and fart and stuff like that. And my position at Jaguar made me especially uh, susceptible to a higher degree of control than any other YouTuber. Um, which is a nice way of saying that I was being leaned on. And by leaned on, I mean, as I said, you know, people getting phone calls and being told that Dale's up to no good. Now, you could phone Dale up and say, Dale, I think that you driving a 1,000cc car around the Nürburgring is highly dangerous and very, very unorthodox and not setting a good example. And I'd say, don't care, right? But if you say that to Jaguar and Jaguar are paying my wages and then Jaguar are like, well, we don't like this and I'm thinking, well, I need to put money on the uh, bank account so I can put food on the table, then all of a sudden, uh-oh, you're like, oh, God, I better stop doing that. And that's pretty much where we've been for the last two and a bit years. Uh, occasional videos going up, not much else happening. Um, and you might think, well, that's hideously unfair, but the Nürburgring have the same rules for everybody. The difference is whether those people, uh, you know, care, or indeed are even coming back to the Nürburgring. If you've got, like, a super huge YouTuber who's just coming here once a year, the Nürburgring aren't going to be able to stop him. Do you know what I mean? So they don't invest too much time and effort in controlling them. It would make no sense. It's a bit damp and slimy to be leaning it over too far, but... Yeah! 
Whereas me, living here, working here, reliant upon the Nürburgring for my daily bread, I have to be very, very careful and I have to respect their wishes. And if their wishes include things like no videos with overtaking that's too fast or too close, no videos with um, tyre squeal or sliding at all, I mean like even a tiny slide, not, not allowed, then I have to respect that. Uh, the first time I think publicly that it became like a thing that people noticed was the NASCAR video. Because part two of the NASCAR video, I was asked to remove it. Uh, because it showed the NASCAR, Dan's, Dan's amazing uh, late model stock car, to be more precise. It showed it getting a flat tyre. And when it got a flat tyre, it went onto the grass and stopped. And then we recovered it on the back of a Bongard truck with a, with a, with a high ab, a hydraulic arm. And unfortunately, uh, that contravened many of the rules. Uh, it showed a loss of control. It showed uh, the consequences of a crash. Um, you know, having a, a lift. I mean, to be clear, the car didn't crash. Uh, it showed lots of stuff that was against the rules, and I put it online anyway, and I got, I got a proper email about that, and I took it down straight away. It's the guy behind me who's speeding, by the way. It's not me. <laughs> so, the NASCAR Part 2 video was, was the first time that you guys saw me put something up, get 200,000 hits on it, and then immediately, like, take it down. Uh, and it was a bit of a confusion for everybody, and I couldn't really publicly say exactly what I'd done wrong, uh, because I was still debating it and trying to get permission to put it back online, you know? In the end, permission was never really given because uh, it contravenes the rules. And now, your next question is logically going to be, why are all those other people posting videos like that with sliding and drifting and doing skids into brunching and stuff like that? Because they can, because they're not on the radar. They're not, you know, they're not out there. I, I've even had conversations directly with the Nürburgring and, and cited examples of why can he do that and I can't do that. And Nürburgring say, well, if we could tell him to stop, we would. And whether or not they tell him to stop or not is actually nothing to do with me. Because my conversation is with the Nürburgring and the Nürburgring are telling me to stop it, so I have to stop it. And that's, that's really where that ends. I, I can't stand here in the middle of a country that I wasn't born in, having made a decision to come to the Nürburgring and... and, and do something here, and then say, oh, but it's not fair, because life isn't fair, is it, basically? So what I can do is, is try and make the best with what I've got. So the rules for everybody at the Nürburgring are pretty much the same. Yes, there are many political and economic reasons why some people might get to do different things than what I get to do. But if I concentrate too much on that, I'm just going to sound like a whiny little uh, bleep. Oh man, some freaking diesel here. I'm up on the pegs. Oh, disgusting. Disgusting. Yeah, so I mean, I already sound like a whiny, whiny bugger anyway, but I'm just trying to tell you how it is. I'm not complaining, I'm just explaining, okay? No complaints, just explains. So, explaining all that um, might lead you to believe that I will never be taking a video on the Nürburgring again. And that's just not true either, because I have a working relationship with the Nürburgring social media peeps. I know what they want, uh, and it's not what I want. And it's probably not exactly what you want, but that's never stopped anybody, has it? So, I think there's a way to work with the Nürburgring next year that I can produce some nice content, have some fun, share the fun that I'm having with my friends, i.e. you guys, and still keep everybody happy. Uh, those, you know, it won't be drifting the Nürburgring videos. Put it that way.
the uh, you know like all those videos from 2007 and 2008 and 2010 of me going full sideways for lap after lap. No, nope, that's not happening again. I mean, I might still be able to do it, but if I did do it, I wouldn't boast about it. Oh shit! What did I just do? Anyway, yeah. Whoa. Look at this. Just go a bit quiet here while I navigate the junction. Oh, I've got to follow a bus. Got to follow a car. So what's on the cards for next year? Good question. I've got lots of ideas. I mean, I've still got a GoPro. It's only a GoPro Hero 5, but it is a GoPro. Um, I'm recording the sound from my helmet through the Bluetooth system, so I apologize. It's not very good. I know that. It's a bit rubbish. But I'm a bit quiet because I'm looking at an overtake. I'll let these two cars finish their overtake and then I'll have a look. Yeah, crack on. Yeah. Okay, so back on to topic. Next year, I'd like to do a few more YouTubes. I have some ideas uh, for interviewing interesting people. I have some ideas for a bit of a weekly show as well, can you believe? Which is definitely feasible for me during this winter downtime. Um, as you may have noticed, the Jaguar taxi is still on full radio silence, and that's because Jaguar Deutschland have still not decided what they want to do next year, or if they're even going to ask the Nürburgring about next year. The Nürburgring haven't told me or Jaguar what's happening with the licenses yet next year either. So that whole thing is just on hold, and has been on hold since March. Um, I'm not an employee of the Jaguar Taxi. I do it as a contract, and I put hours into it, and I get money out of it. So, just to be clear, uh, it's not like I've been sitting on my, uh, on my back end, taking in a load of money and not doing any work for it. Unfortunately, the the Jaguar taxi just never started this year, and I never got any money for it. So, bit of a nightmare. Corona's got a lot to bloody answer for. But there you go. And with no sure sign of Jaguar taxi resuming next year, and I'll be honest, uh, I don't think I could really go and work for one of the other taxi companies anymore. Uh, they've all got certain uh, <laughs> certain opinions of my somewhat extravagant driving style, let's say. And my extravagant driving style probably suits a work's budget much, much better than a private taxi owner's budget, if he wants to make any profit. <laughs> so, um, yes. Uh, I'll be concentrating on my role at Rent for Ring next year, and that does give me a bit of time for a bit of the old YouTubing. And I've still not given up my bikes yet, even though I'm technically 40 years old and therefore uh, theoretically half dead already, I believe, 40 years old. Um, so, yeah, bit of YouTube, bit of bikes, whoop, boink, cheeky wheelie on the way home, because why not? Oh, it's a bit icy. <laughs> Stand it up, go to the edge. There we go. This bit of road here isn't salted, by the way. Now, I can actually take a left turn here. Whoa! So this is like the back way into uh, Zama's back. This all sec this whole section here is is often used in the uh, in the Eiffel Rally, by the way. So if you ever come and watch the Eiffel Supercar Rally, which is um, you know, amazing rally cars from the 80s and 90s, all gathered in, in one little town of Down. 
uh, Zama's back has normally a day, sometimes even two full days of rallying. And these fantastic little felt vagues, field ways, are great for that. So, I live in the middle of the Eiffel. I still work with awesome cars uh, every day. I still have a massive love of bikes. I still have a GoPro. I still have a camera. I'm thinking, why not just pivot my channel a little bit more towards all that? And throw a few more uploads up there. And obviously, there's a little bit of planning for next year's racing going on as well. And, you know, there's some options. There's a bit of N24 on the table. Uh, there's actually a little bit of uh, brick car as well on the table. Uh, if I should choose to take it. Or if I could make it financially viable for me to go to England to race in a championship. Oh, into Zamersbach. There's a little restriction on this road as well. Avoid the ice. But five and a half tons, even my BMW can uh, can get through that. We're not going to go all the way to my house. I live somewhere up there. Thank you very much for tuning in. But do remember, click like and subscribe, and if you've got any questions, just ask me in the comments. But I am less than a quarter of a mile from my house now, so I'm going to turn this off. Bye.